Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Spibs and today we're just going to be looking at a couple of different ways that we can have backup power in our base. With the introduction of turrets requiring electricity, there's much more need to have backup power for if someone takes out your main power source. So additionally, with the introduction of generators, there's now a couple of different options for having backup power. Now I've gone ahead and designed a few different circuits just to uh, get a few ideas flowing of the different options that are now out there. I've also expanded essentially on an original design just to have a large battery as a backup source in your base. Uh, and I go through those couple of different options with you guys here. So sit back and enjoy the video. And if you do have any questions, then feel free to leave a comment or join my discord, which is gonna be in the the description below. Some of this stuff might be a little bit confusing, but I do my absolute best to try and explain it as cleanly as possible. Alrighty guys, so we're just going to go through something a little bit boring to start with, but it's really necessary in understanding how to be able to use these circuits properly. So you'll see that above all these circuits, which we'll get into in a second, is listed something called power draw. Now, this is what I call uh, what the base actually requires. So it doesn't include what's actually within the circuit here. It's just everything after the last OR switch in each circuit. So, for example, we might have nine lights powered in our base. Uh, each light requires two units of power, so the power draw is 18. All right? Everybody uh, and every single base is going to have a different power draw, and this is what you need to understand and be able to calculate uh, to make these backup systems work properly. The reason that I say that is because the electrical branches, either two or three of them, depending on which variation you use, will need to be programmed based off the power draw. So I'll explain that when we look at each circuit, how to calculate uh, what each electrical branch needs to be programmed to. Um, and this is the reason that I haven't included uh, a restriction diagram for wiring these up. Um, it's because each individual person will have different power requirements depending on uh, what's in their base. Anyway, we'll look at the individual circuits now, we'll move on. And just quickly before we do move on, now in the video that I uh, did for this particular circuit, we did actually have a power draw of 18. So the really easy way to calculate uh, how much power you're going to need uh, to allocate to each electrical branch is I'll, sh I'll show you just here. So the first electrical branch here is the power draw plus three, pretty simple. And then the second electrical electrical branch, sorry, is the power draw plus one. So here we have a variation of the circuit that we just looked at. This is a double battery backup system. Um, the advantage of this is that the power can last longer. So if both batteries end up on full charge, then you can have up to eight hours of time until your circuits run out. Now this may be in the case uh, that your main power gets destroyed, perhaps when you're offline or uh, outside a base and you don't have the resources to replace it straight away uh, or whatever the case. So this is gonna be a big advantage. Now, the other option for you is to just simply make multiple instances of the very first circuit, which is the single battery that we looked at. And this just enables you to split up all your circuits in your base and have uh, multiple backup systems within your base. Um, what you have to keep in mind as well is each circuit with a battery backup needs to be limited to about 90 to 100 power as that's all that the battery can deliver at full um, at any amount of charge anyway it can only output 100 units of power so if you have a large electrical circuit throughout your whole base then you'll need um, multiple backup systems if that makes sense all right let's move on let me just quickly demonstrate how this circuit works so if mains power drops below the required power load or this 76 power that this first electrical branch is set to or it gets disconnected altogether then the first battery you can see here kicks in now this first battery is still preventing the second battery from draining 
that you can see here. But once this battery runs out of power, which I can just simulate by disconnecting here, then the second battery kicks in and takes over powering the base. Once the mains power or the second battery comes back online, which would only happen, of course, if the mains power was connected, then everything switches back to just the mains power there and it returns to normal. Fairly soon. Presuming that the power draw is 70, again, yours could be completely different. We'll have a look at the electrical branches. So this top one here coming out of the all switch is the power draw plus one, which make it 71 in this case. The next one down is the power draw plus four. And then this one here is the power draw plus six. Providing uh, you've calculated your power draw correctly, you should be able to program these electrical branches correctly. And again, you wanna make sure, especially since you have two batteries in this instances, that your power delivery system is uh, quite large. I've got 160 units of power, which would be the bare minimum in this situation. So either this amount of solar panels receiving a good amount of sunlight every day, or two wind turbines at a decent height, I would recommend. All right, let's have a look at how to wire this one up. Alrighty, so it's a fairly easy circuit to wire up, but a little tricky to understand for beginners. Essentially, what is happening is similar to the uh, previous circuit, where if the power delivery or the power supply drops below a certain point or gets cut out altogether, then the first battery kicks in and takes over supply to the base. When this battery runs out, what happens is the power coming from the first battery no longer flows, which means it's no longer blocking power from the second battery. So of course the second battery will take over supply to the base and everything will be able to come back online if the mains power is reconnected, including the charging of the batteries. All right, so this is going to be another backup system that we're just having a look at. Um, this might be good for solos or smaller groups uh, that have trouble finding the large battery. Uh, in some instances, it can be hard to come across. Um, and in other instances, it can be better to recycle because high quality can be a greater need in some cases. However, this is just using the fuel generator. Now I'm using a small battery uh, connected to the force start here to actually kick it in. And I wanted to explain my reasoning for that um, is because unlike the, the batteries, um, when they're connected to a blocker or a circuit of any type, when power is cut out altogether, say the solar panels are on my roof and my roof gets rocketed and they get destroyed, so no power is flowing whatsoever, I don't have a way to then start the generator. Whereas the large batteries will just start automatically outputting power if they're not being blocked anymore. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'll explain how the circuit works when we wire it up. Um, but essentially we're gonna go with a power draw of 18 again because we're presuming that it's probably in a smaller base. We also don't wanna exceed uh, the power usage of the uh, generator or the power output of the generator, should I say, which is a total of 40 as well. So again, this is a small base situation most likely. You could expand this circuit if you wanted to by adding more generators and using root combiners, but that's completely up to you. It's probably not the most practical solution if you have a larger need for power anyway. However, we'll just look at this electrical branch. So this is power draw plus one, similar to the first circuit. This one is power draw plus three, which is similar to the last circuit. And this electrical branch is just set to default here. All right, let's look at how to wire this one up. 
So another fairly easy circuit to wire up and I'll just demonstrate what actually happens. So like I mentioned in the explanation, I wanted a way for the generator to start if my power delivery system got cut out altogether. Now it will of course work when power fluctuates, so if you're using solar power when the sun goes down or even if you're using wind power and the wind dies down a little. If it drops below uh, what is set into this first electrical branch, which is 21, then the generator is able to kick in. So I'll simulate this one getting cut out. So my power delivery is now no longer in effect. The generator kicks in because it's no longer being stopped by this electrical branch here and the battery is able to start it. If I reconnect the power, of course, then it's going to shut off the generator and start charging the battery again. All right, guys, so this is the final circuit that we're gonna have a look at in this particular episode. Now, this one is designed more as a proof of concept. In my opinion and experience, it's probably not the most uh, practical design to go with, but it certainly is an option if you just want to play around with what's possible. And like I encourage, it's, it's a good way to understand how the electrics can work. Um, if you can design more complicated um, and even less practical designs, it gives you a better understanding of how everything else works in the whole system. Me personally, I would go with either circuit one or circuit two using just the large batteries as your backup, but that's not always an option. So this is ways that you can use uh, both components using the generator and the large battery if you so wish to. So the power drawer in this particular circuit is set to 39. Now, the reason that I've done that is because we're using a generator and it, of course, only outputs 40. Then we're capped at a, um, at a power draw of 39 if the generator does actually kick in and we're only left with that. So we don't want to exceed that. There are ways to add um, more generators to the circuit using root combiners. Um, and if you want to do it on a build server to find out how to do that, then you can certainly play around with that. I definitely encourage it. However, we're just gonna look at, like I said, this proof of concept, just to get an understanding of what's possible. With the power draw at 39, we're gonna have a look at the values of the electrical branches. So this first one here is going to be your power draw plus 10. The second one here is going to be your power draw plus eight. This one here is gonna be power draw plus two. And then the other electrical branches in the circuit aren't affected by power draw. They're on uh, a different side of the circuit, so you don't need to uh, adjust them accordingly. This electrical branch that uh, is leading out of uh, this particular blocker is set to five. And then the other two electrical branches are just set to default. So essentially what is happening here is if the main power drops below the threshold that we've set, which in this case is 49 units of power, or it gets knocked out completely uh, by raiders or someone trying to grief our base, then our large battery kicks in just like in the first two examples. So we can see now the blocker is allowing the charge from the battery to flow. If the battery then runs out of power, the generator kicks in just like in the previous circuit with the small rechargeable battery triggering uh, the force start on the generator. Now, the reason that I have uh, the battery in both this circuit and the previous one uh, starting the generator is I wanted an automatic way. So I wanted a way that if I was out of base or offline for the generator to start. Of course, you can always switch it on or off manually if you have access to it, but I wanted an automatic way to have it happen. Now, if you are able to repair mains power 
and get it back online, or it came above that threshold again, so the sun came back up or the wind picked back up if you're using wind turbine, then the generator automatically switches off. The same thing happens if the battery comes back online for whatever reason. So now we're going to have a look at how to wire this up and at this point of filming with the battery at full charge and the generator with a full stack of low grade in it, then you should have about five hours of uh, backup power here, at least at that 39 power draw mark. Now, like I said, it's much better to use batteries because it has a higher output and they're a little bit more reliable. You also have to use less components as well. But we'll wire this up and uh, if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments. Right, guys so that's going to wrap it up for this video now hopefully that gives you a few different ideas and options for having backup power in your base um, it's definitely a much more important thing with the introduction of turrets requiring electricity now that uh, you have backup power if someone was to come along and take out your main power source then that essentially switches up off all your turrets if you don't have some sort of backup system in place. Don't forget guys, I do now have a public Discord, so the link will be in the description of the video if you guys wanna check that out, then that'd be fantastic. Now, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Get Some Servers. They're a group that um, provides a, a bunch of servers for all different types of games. They um, very kindly gave me access to their staging branch server, um, which I've done all this building on. And the lead up to the update, I was able to come on and test all the new things. They were really, really cool guys um, and willing to help out uh, when, when I needed it. So I'll leave a link to their Discord in the description as well. Go check them out and show them some love. Otherwise, uh, you know, the support on the channel has been absolutely phenomenal in the last week especially there's just been some crazy growth and uh you know some really exciting things happening so i hope that continues hope you guys enjoy the videos in the future as well otherwise just like usual if you dislike the video hit that thumbs down but if you did like it it really means a lot to me smash that thumbs up leave a comment and subscribe to the channel otherwise guys we will see you in the next one take care